everyone, Donna here. Over the years, we've talked here on my YouTube channel a lot about English words that are used in German. Sometimes English words in German have the exact same meaning as in English, like with the word weird or vlog or eyeliner. And sometimes they don't have the exact same meaning, like with old timer or wellness. In today's video, some English words that are being used more often here in Germany in otherwise German language sentences in 2020. Now, this is definitely not to say that some of these words or phrases perhaps weren't used in German conversations before 2020. Many of them were, but I have especially seen and heard them being used by many more more people here in Germany in otherwise German sentences over the last few weeks, including two really important ones to talk about, so please stick around for the whole video. Starting the video off with homeschooling. Homeschooling is a word that I've heard used in otherwise German sentences before 2020. In den USA kann man homeschooling machen, but because it wasn't something that you could actually do here in Germany, this word was not very widespread. Until now, with the situation in 2020, the English phrase homeschooling has started to be used way more often in otherwise German sentences by German speakers. However, I do think that it's very important to mention here what a lot of parents in the US who normally homeschool their children throughout the year are saying that this is not actually homeschooling. This, what's going on right now, is not homeschooling, but rather, you know, it's trying to teach something to your children from at home in the middle of a crisis. So this situation, many of those parents have stressed, is very different from normal actual homeschool, where they say they, they often go to museums and other educational events with their children, and they go to meetups with other children. But yeah, the term homeschool, ha homeschooling has been used a lot in Germany lately. Social distancing. Over the last few months, I have heard lots of people in Germany speaking German refer to social distancing. When I put social distancing into an English German dictionary just to check, I do get social distancing in German, which for those of you wondering is listed as das. It is das social distancing. Among others, I also do get soziale distanzierung and abstandsregeln. Interestingly, soziale distanzierung, which is really hard for me to say, is not das like social distancing, but rather die. Die soziale Distanzierung. Zoomen. The word zoomen was actually used in German quite regularly, and I guess I would say like mainstream before 2020, to refer to zooming in. Zooming in with your camera or zooming in on your smartphone. But I'm including it in this video because zoomen, meaning to use zoom and have a video call, is a new way to use it in German in 2020. Have you said something like sollen wir zoomen or wir haben gerade gezoomt over the last few weeks? If not, how have you been describing it? Have you been using the term video call or video chat? Let me know in the comments. Lockdown. The word lockdown existed in English long before 2020, but I'm pretty sure it only started being used in German this year. But let me know in the comments if you've noticed it before now. The dictionary, by the way, tells me that in German it is der lockdown. And I would say that I've been hearing both lockdown in German, as well as the German Ausgangssperre and Ausgangssperrung. Both D, by the way. However, I'm not sure if Sperre and Sperrung mean exactly the same thing. So also, have you been using lockdown or Ausgangssperre or Sperrung when talking about the situation? And is Sperre and Sperrung the same? Let me know in the comments, thanks. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is not new to 2020, but over the last few weeks, many more people in Germany, German TV stations, German radio stations, German YouTubers, German journalists, have been talking about Black Lives Matter. As explained on the Black Lives Matter website, which I will link to in the description box below, and I really recommend you checking out for more information, Black Lives Matter was founded in 2013 in response to the acquittal of Trayvon Martin's murderer. And they write, 
We are working for a world where black lives are no longer systematically targeted for demise. In a 2018 interview, Alicia Garza, one of the co-creators of the Black Lives Matter Global Network, said that Black Lives Matter was created as a response to state violence and anti-black racism, and a call to action for those who want to fight it and build a world where black lives do, in fact, matter. I am linking down in the description box below to that interview, as well as so much more information on the Black Lives Matter movement, on systemic racism, racism in the US, racism in Germany, what is systemic racism, police brutality, the current demonstrations in America and around the world in the form of articles, in the form of books, audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube videos, Instagram content in German as well as English. So please check them out and get more information. I think it's also important to talk about the term all lives matter here. I have been seeing some people here in Germany using the hashtag all lives matter and I just really want to stress and make clear that all lives matter is not a way to express solidarity with black lives matter I will include lots of information to this down in the description box as well including a link to a really helpful explanation in German on the Instagram page from say my name responding to black lives matter with all lives matter completely misses the point and is often used as an attempt to invalidate the Black Lives Matter movement and or to derail the conversation. There are so many different metaphors out there about this, about responding to Black Lives Matter with All Lives Matter. Like for example, in an article by Donovan Bennett, where he says, if you broke your hand, your response is to talk to the doctor about treating the broken hand. Having that conversation is not disrespectful to your other body parts that are healthier. He, as well as others, have also described it in terms of a breast cancer fundraiser. That, you know, if you were at a fundraiser for breast cancer, it would not make any sense for a bunch of people to start insisting that, no, actually, all cancers matter, you know, in response to you trying to raise money and awareness for breast cancer. As he writes, talking about breast cancer doesn't take away from the legitimate concern about other cancers. And as Rachel Cargill explained in an article, which of course I will link to down in the description box below, at a community fundraiser for a decaying local library, you would never see a mob of people from the next city over show up angry and offended yelling, all libraries matter, especially when theirs is already well funded. White privilege. White privilege is also something that has been talked about more and more in Germany over the past few weeks. And again, more resources and information and links in German as well as English down in the description box below. But a really great description that I've recently seen on the Instagram page from German singer Ivy Quaino is that white privilege doesn't mean you haven't lived a hard life. It means the color of your skin isn't one of the things making it hard. In that post, she also went on to say this in German as well, and my best translation of that into English is, sometimes it's hard for white people not to feel attacked in this conversation. So it remains important to set your ego aside and continue to reflect. As Olivia Harewood explains as well in a recent James Corden video, one of the biggest misconceptions about privilege is that saying you have it is saying you have an easy life or that you had it easy growing up. It doesn't mean that. What privilege does mean, specifically white privilege, is that your skin color didn't make your life more challenging. Having that privilege, she goes on to say, means that you don't have to deal with things like being racially profiled or getting unfairly turned down for a mortgage loan because of your skin color, or being a minority at your workplace so you have to explain privilege to the people you work with. So for me in my life, because of my skin color, because I'm white, I have particular privileges and it's very important for me to recognize that. So living here in Germany, for example, I'm a foreigner. I'm not from Germany, but because of my skin color, if I just go downtown and walk around, nobody assumes me to be a foreigner. Germans don't assume me to be a foreigner when they see me. And I am 
treated a certain way because of that. That is a privilege that I have. I hope you see that. That, you know, and it affects me every day of my life here in Germany. If I go to a party, if I go to an event, if I go to a restaurant, if I go to a cafe, because of my skin color, people just automatically assume me to be German. And that affects my entire experience of living here. And that's just one example of white privilege that I have every day here in Germany. I will also link down below to a really great interview with Roger Reckless. He's a rapper and an author here in Germany. He grew up in a town in Bavaria and he talks a lot about very important things in this interview. Please watch the whole interview with him, including he talks about the, where are you from? No, but where are you really from? questioning. And I, it is also a privilege for me that I do not have to get this line of questioning because of my skin color. As I said, people usually assume I'm from Germany, but then if they talk to me and they find out, okay, they hear my accent, I'm not from Germany, and they ask, so where are you from? And I say, Florida. That's it. They accept my answer. They don't say, no, but where are you really from? Stefan and I have talked about it in some videos before. We've said that we aren't planning to have kids and that's not changed. We don't want to have kids, but just hypothetically speaking, if Stefan and I had a child here in Germany, that child would have a mom who is a foreigner, but because of their skin, because they're white, if they go out in the world and meet someone and that person asks them, so where are you from? And they say Munich, that would, that they would just accept that answer. They wouldn't say to them, no, but where are you really from? Where are you really from? Until they would say, oh, well, my mom is from Florida. They wouldn't have to deal with that at all. It wouldn't even come up because of their skin color. That's white privilege that they would have. They would be the first generation of a mom who is a foreigner here in Germany, but they would have that privilege. In a recent BBC article, of course, also that link down below, they interviewed JT Flowers, an American rapper, student, and activist living in the UK who described white privilege like this. He said, you might be a white person and still be poor with a lack of access to education or face a language barrier in the workplace. It doesn't mean you can't be disadvantaged in other ways. It just means with respect to that one particular thing, your race and skin color, you do have the luxury of not being able to think about it. It means having the luxury of being able to step outside without fearing that you're going to be discriminated against or oppressed in any way because of the color of your skin. And in that video with James Corden, Olivia Harewood also goes on to explain that recognizing your privilege is a huge step. And now that you've recognized it, you can use it to fight for a more just society including big ways like fighting for social justice in areas like education, healthcare, and housing, and smaller ways like listening to people of color, especially when we talk about racism, without making it about your feelings. Please watch the full video of that and so much more all linked down in the description box below. As I said, I'm linking to information down there in both English as well as German. So please check it out. So my question for you is, which of the videos, articles, books, and other links down in the description have you seen already? And which ones are you watching, reading, listening to for the first time now? Please let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and a really big thank you so very much to everyone who I quoted in this video. And thank you very much to everyone whose information, whose uh, articles, YouTube videos, podcasts, everything else, resources that I linked to in the description box below. Thank you so very much for the work that you're doing and for your work educating. Thank you, thank you very, very, very much. Until next time, Auf Wiedersehen.